Hello everyone, welcome back to Stuart Technologies. In the last video, we worked on the robot software, got the code organized, and basic joint angle control working. This time we'll be working on the robot's forward and inverse kinematics, along with starting work on some basic path planning for the robot. So without further ado, let's get started. Right now, I just have basic joint angle control for the robot. That means I can input a combination of joint angles and the robot will move each joint accordingly. While this is good, it doesn't allow me to specify the position of the end effector in 3D space. To do this, we need to work on the robot's kinematics. Kinematics is a branch of physics that describes the motion of objects without considering the forces acting on them. A robot's kinematics is used to describe the motion of the robot in 3D space. The forward kinematics of a robot are the kinematic equations that turn joint angles into position and orientation of the end effector. To calculate the forward kinematics of my robot, I'll be using the denovid hartenberg convention to generate a transformation matrix that takes the angle for each joint and provides the position and orientation of my end effector. The inverse kinematics of a robot do the exact opposite. You provide the desired orientation and position for the robot, and the calculations will result in the required joint angles to reach that configuration. There are two main ways to solve for inverse kinematics. The numerical approach uses iteration to compute its solutions. This is how most software libraries do inverse kinematics. The alternative is the analytical approach, which involves using geometry and some matrix algebra to produce inverse kinematic equations. For now, I decided to take the analytical approach for this robot so the computations run fast and are fairly easy to implement in code. I implemented the kinematics in Python since it's fairly easy to compute using the NumPy library. I started with the forward kinematics since it'll be needed to not only verify my inverse kinematic solution, but also solve for the angles of joints 4, 5, and 6 in the future. The code is pretty simple. I list the DH parameters in a NumPy array and I use these values to calculate the homogeneous transformation matrices between each of the DH frames. And then I take these matrices and multiply them together to get a single transformation matrix between frame 0 and frame 5. If I run the code, you can see it outputs the full transformation matrix to the terminal. Moving on to the inverse kinematics test, I solve for the angles of the first three joints geometrically on paper first. This is pretty straightforward since the first three joints of my robot are revolute or rotational joints as opposed to the prismatic or translational joints. The configuration for this robot would be considered 3R since there are three revolute joints in series. Note that I'm not taking into account the last three joints, 4, 5, and 6, because those only matter in orienting the end effector in 3D space. Joints 1, 2, and 3 position the end effector in 3D space. You can find a ton of resources for deriving the kinematics for a 3R robot online, and I'll link a few that I found useful in the description down below if you want to try it yourself. Once I derive the equations for the first three joints, I implemented them in code using NumPy as a function called IK. The function IK takes in the target coordinates for the end effector, so X, Y, and Z, and then it'll return Q, uh, an array that holds all of the joint angles for the robot. And you can see I'm doing all the math here for my inverse kinematics, setting Q to the appropriate values, and then returning Q. I also implemented the forward kinematics as another function called fk. This takes in those same joint angles, q, and it does the same math we saw in forward kinematics test. It produces the transformation matrix and then extracts the x, y, and z position of the wrist center from that matrix and returns that. To test it, I simply pick a target position for the robot, and then I use the ik function to produce the resulting joint angles for that target position. And then I pass those very same joint angles into the forward kinematics to get the position for that set of joint angles. So ideally, I should get the same target value after all these calculations are finished. So let's say I wanna move the robot wrist center, its end effector to 300 millimeters in the X direction, 200 millimeters in the Y direction, and 400 millimeters in the Z direction. The code is telling me that I need to move the robot joints to 33.69 degrees for joint 1, 29.04 degrees for joint 2, negative 12.13 degrees for joint 3, and then 0 degrees for 4, 5, and of course 6. The forward kinematic values tell me that by moving the joints to those positions, I get to the exact target position I expect. 
these values here match. And that means all of the inverse kinematics are correct and the forward kinematics are also correct. Since everything is working, I can now either choose to move this code onto the Teensy in order to calculate the joint angles in real time, or I can modify the Python code to stream these joint angles over serial to the Teensy. I think for now, I'll keep these calculations off the Teensy just to simplify that code a bit and instead work on implementing joint interpolated motion on the Teensy so that every joint arrives at its destination at the same time. Despite being able to now position and orient the end effector within the robot's workspace, we're still not finished. The movement of the robot still looks very mechanical and rigid, not to mention some joints continue to move while others stop earlier. This leaves me with two things I need to do. Implement an algorithm for something called joint interpolated motion, and work on some method of trajectory planning for the robot. I'll start with joint interpolation and work on trajectory planning in a later video. The basic algorithm for joint interpolation goes something like this. First, we calculate the amount each joint has to move. Second, using the robot's max joint speeds, we calculate the time it takes for each joint to reach the target position. Third, we find out which joint will take the longest to reach their position. And finally, we calculate new speeds for every other joint so that they all arrive at the same time. It's important to note that despite all of the joints theoretically arriving to their destinations at the same time, the trajectory of the end effector will not be linear. In order to produce a linear trajectory, you'll need to implement linear interpolation instead. I may come back and implement this later so that the robot can make both joint movements and linear movements. But for now, I'll stick with joint interpolation and get that working first. Now we're going to test out the robot kinematics and joint interpolation, but before we do that, let me quickly go over some of the changes I made to the software. Besides implementing the joint interpolation I mentioned earlier, I also implemented a new command parser, so now the robot can not only move each joint with the move command, but it can also home one or all of the joints using the home command and request the current joint positions using the status command. So you can see here, home command, up here is the move command and then we have the status command. In addition to that, I also changed the main loop. So now the robot checks the serial monitor at a rate of uh, 10 Hertz, and it updates each of the stepper motors at a rate of 100 Hertz. This will be necessary later when we finally implement the PID controllers for each joint properly. For this test, I'll be showing you the various movements without interpolated motion first, and then I'll show you those same movements with interpolated motion so you can get a sense of how this works. As you can see, the robot's movements are much smoother with the joint interpolation compared to how it was before. There are still a few issues with the interpolation since you may have noticed some joints still arrive at their position a bit faster than the others. I'm not quite sure what's causing that, but I think it may either be a small error in my calculations or the max speeds I have set for each joint are slightly off. Regardless, I'm pretty satisfied with the progress that I've made so far. Getting the kinematics working marked a big milestone for the robot. Now I can position the end effector anywhere I want to in 3D space. This will make way for more exciting things like path planning and maybe even obstacle avoidance with some computer vision in the future. But for now, we have a few things on the docket for next video. Gripper design, fixing the joint interpolated motion algorithm, and continuing the work on path planning.
If you have any questions or comments about the project so far, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. If you like this video, share it with a friend and make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications when the next video drops. Thanks for watching.